Hello everyone. My name is Seth Saeed and I'm one of the researchers on the topic study. Welcome to the training for topic study. The aim for topic study is to improve the oral health of older people in care homes. Thank you so much for being here today. The care home that you are working in has agreed to take part in the topic study. The training today will cover the background, aims, and outcomes of the topic study. We will first describe the study design and how recruitment, allocation of care homes, eligibility, screening, consent, and withdrawal will work. We will then describe the tooth brushing intervention, how data collection will work, and the timeline of the study. We will also introduce you to the study team and what their responsibilities are. We will tell you about the documents that are needed in the study and which of those documents you may need to use. Then we will describe adverse events and serious adverse events, what they mean and how they will need to be documented. Then we will talk about the delegation log an investigator site file and how they need to be kept. We will outline good clinical practice requirements and the importance of safeguarding. The reason for conducting the topic study is that researchers found that the quality of oral health for those people living in care homes is generally worse than their peers living at home. About half of all care home residents have their own natural teeth. Preventing dental disease for care homes, care home residents is important for their function and quality of life. Good oral health not only affects the ability to eat, but also in communication, appearance, and self-esteem. For example, the willingness to smile. To deal with this problem, the National Institute of Care Excellence created guidelines on maintaining oral health for residents in care homes. It is called the NG48 or National Guideline 48. The topic study aims to find out how realistic these guidelines are to implement in practice. The NG48 is a document with suggestions as to how to maintain and improve oral health of adults in care homes and ensure that the residents get timely access to dental treatment. It has been written for care home managers, care home staff, dental services, care home residents, their families, and caregivers. The NG48 makes several recommendations, including that residents should have access to dental services, receive frequent oral health assessments, and have personalized oral health plans based on these assessments. The NG48 recommends that care home staff should have appropriate knowledge and skills about oral care that there should be accessible and uh, available oral health services and oral health promotion within the care homes and also daily mouth care. The aim of the topic study is to see how practicable it is to implement the NG48 recommendations in care homes and to see if it would be possible or worthwhile to run a larger study to find out how effective it is in improving oral health of older people in care homes. In the topic study, there is no primary outcome measure, meaning that there is not one type of data we are interested in. Instead of having one main outcome, we are measuring for, um, we will take measurements of clinical outcomes, oral symptoms, dental care, quality of life, and oral health needs. We will also ask care home managers, staff, residents, and their families how they felt being part of the study and what could be improved. The topic study is funded by NIHR, 
National Institute for Health Research. Now we will talk through the topic study design. Roughly, there are five stages, including inviting and recruiting suitable care homes to take part in a study. Randomly allocating care homes to be in the intervention or the control group. The control group is the group of care homes and residents who do not receive the intervention and continue with their routine practice. The intervention group is made up of care homes and residents who are asked to implement the intervention, which includes a training package for care home staff to promote knowledge and skills in oral health promotion, the use of oral health assessment tool, and a daily toothbrushing regime with toothpaste containing 1,500 ppm fluoride. At the end of the study, we will compare the results of the intervention and control groups. Once the care homes have been randomly allocated, we will individually screen care home residents to make sure they are suitable for the study. Then depending on which group their care home is in, the residents will either receive the oral health intervention for which care, ho care, uh, for which care staff um, will receive specific training or care homes will continue with their normal routine practices. The researchers on the topic study will collect data at the start of the study, then at six months and 12 months thereafter. Now we will describe how care homes are recruited onto the study. The topic study needs 120 participants in total. So we are hoping to recruit approximately 12 care homes, six in Northern Ireland and six in North north london to complete the study in order to be suitable to take part care homes must have at least 20 residents who are age 65 and over in addition to be suitable care homes must not have only high dependency units and must not provide only end of life care now we will describe the random allocation of care homes. This means the way in which they will be allocated to either the intervention group or the control group. Once care homes have agreed to take part in the study, we will use digital system or computer to randomly allocate them to one of the two groups. They will either be in the intervention group, which means they will be asked to implement the intervention which will include the staff oral health training package, the oral health assessment tool, and the daily tooth brushing regime, or they will be allocated to the control group, meaning that they will continue with the routine oral health practices. We will now describe how the participants will be screened to make sure that they are suitable to take part in the topic study. In order to take part in the study, care home residents must be at least 65 years old and have at least one natural tooth apart from dentures, and they also need to be a full-time resident in the care home. We will aim to recruit a minimum of five and a maximum of 20 resident, uh, residents uh, from each participating, uh, participating care home. Some residents will not be suitable to take part in the study. The reasons for this could be because they are receiving end of life or palliative care, or because they have a severe cognitive impairment for which we will use a questionnaire to check, or because they are currently taking part in oral health study, or it could be because they cannot speak fluently, as unfortunately we do not have funding to provide translators. Now we will describe how residents will be screened. There is a three-stage process and you can see the key points of the eligibility criteria on the post-it note on the slide here. 
In stage one, the care home manager or staff will identify potential residents from personal information. Researchers from the topic study would not have access to residents' personal records. Care home managers or staff uh, will be mindful of suitability criteria and then residents who fulfill the initial criteria would be given an information sheet about two further screening tests that would need to be completed before resident can participate in the study. A, co a copy of participant information sheet, consent form and screening questionnaires will be in the pack that will be provided for your information. Stage two of the screening process will occur 48 hours after the resident has received the information sheet and has had time to consider whether they wanted to continue to the next stage of screening. If this is the case, the research assistant will take the resident's written and signed consent on an informed consent form. An informed consent form is sometimes called an ICF, after this, the research assistant will use a screening test which checks the resident's level of cognitive functioning. This test is called a 6CID. It is the name of test and uh, here 6CID uh, stands for six item cognitive impairment test. If a resident score between zero and nine, they are considered to have either normal cognitive function or a mild cognitive impairment and are therefore deemed suitable for the study. If a resident were to score 10 or above, they would be considered to have severe cognitive impairment and would not be suitable to take part in the study. In stage three of the screening, the research assistant confirms that the resident has at least one natural trait uh, to uh, by performing a brief dental check that is called as lift the lip exercise. If the participant has at least one natural tooth and if they are interested to continue with the study, then they will receive another information sheet which outlines what the main study would involve. The resident has either 48 hours to consider whether they would like to take part in the main study or not. After 48 hours, the research assistant or clinical dental examiner will return to ask the resident if they would like to continue to take part in the main study and to answer any questions the resident may have about the study. If the resident wants to continue, then they can complete another consent form or they are free to withdraw their interest in the study. What do we mean by informed consent? Informed consent is a process by which a subject voluntarily confirms his or her willingness to participate in a particular trial after having been informed of all the aspects of the trial that are relevant to the subject's decision to participate. Informed consent is documented by means of a written, signed, and dated informed consent form. Care home staff and managers will be asked to store any forms that are signed by participants in a locked cabinet in a secure place in the building and not throw them away. We will discuss data storage with care home managers and staff and support each home on a case-by-case -case basis to store study forms appropriately. The way the data are stored will be discuss discussed in more detail later on in this presentation. It is important that care home residents are free to withdraw from the study at any stage. Withdrawing from the study will not affect the way in which they receive service and nor will they receive any penalties for withdrawing. If a resident would like to withdraw from the study and are in the intervention group, then they will stop receiving the intervention. If you become aware that a resident would like to withdraw from the study, then please inform the research staff as soon as possible using the contact details we, we will provide at the end of this training. 
in this section we will describe what will happen to the care homes who are in the intervention group and what will happen to the care homes who are in the control group 50% of the care homes will be allocated to the intervention group care homes which are allocated to this group will be asked to implement the oral health intervention based on nice guideline ng48 for 12 months the oral health intervention will include a staff training package which will contain a training video and a hard copy training manuals and laminated reference guide as well as online training provided by a dedicated website this will facilitate the training and education of care home staff and help them to provide routine oral health care for older people residing in the care homes care home staff will also be trained to undertake a brief and practical assessment of residents oral health needs using the oral health assessment tool also known as ohath this will help them to understand the needs of the residents and will be reviewed and updated over time there is also the daily tooth brushing regime using a toothpaste that contains 1500 ppm fluoride 50% of care homes will be allocated to the control group which means they will be asked to continue with their routine oral health practices at the end of the study all the care homes in the control group will be provided with the materials previously received by the intervention group now we will describe what we mean by baseline and follow up assessments and when these will happen the topic researchers will ask the residents who are participants in the study to complete questionnaires and will support the residents to fill these in the questionnaires will be filled in at the start of the study will be baseline then others will be collected at 6 months and then 12 months after the baseline the questionnaires include questions about residents general and oral health a dental examiner will also visit participants and conduct a uh, dental examination at baseline and 12 months after baseline there will be no dental examination 6 months after baseline here we can see the study timeline we can see that the care homes get allocated to either the control or the intervention group the figure demonstrates the type of assessments that will be undertaken and when at baseline which is the start of the study 6 months after baseline and 12 months after baseline this slide shows who's who on the topic study at the top in the central area is professor george who is a chief investigator for the topic study this means he takes overall responsibility for the conduct of the whole trial and conduct of the trial at the london site connected to the london site are anesha patel sana daniel and me saif sana and me work as a research assistant based at ucl and anesha works as a clinical studies officer for the clinical research network in north thames and we are very grateful for her help on the study on the top right corner is dr gary mckenna a co principal investigator who is responsible for the overall initiation and conduct of the study in northern ireland dr shinid watson is the lead research fellow at northern ireland site professor paul brockelhurst on the top left hand corner is also a co principal investigator and is responsible for overall conduct of the trial now we will present care home staff responsibilities there are different responsibilities for care home staff working for care homes who are in the intervention group 
and those that are in the control group. In the intervention group, there will be some forms that needs to be filled out. These forms are called as CRF, standing for case report forms. A CRF is a printed or electronic document used to collect research data. There will be a CRF for every resident enrolled in the trial and one copy will be stored at the care home. The researcher will collect the CRF periodically when visiting the care home. In the intervention group, the CRFs include a daily log of tooth brushing intervention, a weekly checklist of reported episodes of dental pain, any discomfort, and other items, and an oral health assessment, a brief and practical assessment of the resident's oral health needs. There will be a video training for all staff working with the intervention group so that they know how to deliver and complete oral health assessment. We have printed all these questionnaires for you in the packs provided. Now would be a great time to have a look. In the control group, care home staff only need to complete and store the weekly checklist. The risk to participants is expected to be low in this study. Nevertheless, we need to be prepared for and record adverse and serious adverse events should they occur. An adverse event or AE is any untoward medical occurrence which happens during the study. For example, this would be anything considered notable or unusual for this resident, for example, a fall or an illness. Pre-existing conditions do not qualify as adverse events unless they worsen during the study. A serious adverse event or SAE is something that results in death or is life-threatening and requires hospitalization or results in significant disability. Neither AEs or SAE need to appear to be related to the study procedures to be relevant and always need to be recorded and shared with the research team. The researcher will be in contact with the care home on a monthly basis to collect information about AE and SAE occurrences. It is important to keep a record of AEs and SAEs when they occur so that the researcher will be able to describe the event as mild, meaning it does not interfere with participants' usual function, moderate meaning that it interferes to some extent with participants' usual function, or severe meaning that it interferes significantly with participants' usual function. The researcher also needs to be able to record if the conduct of the study create the AE, definitely, probably, possibly, unlikely, and not related. That's why uh, keep notes at, time, at the time of the event, uh, and that's why it is very important. AEs and SAEs must be recorded from the moment a participant's consent to take part in the study and one month after the end of the study. The delegation log is a document which lists all the people who have responsibilities on the study. It lists their name, role, start date, end date, and all their responsibilities on the study. All the study related duties and tasks will be delegated to the appropriate staff. It is important to note that while this duty is delegated, the responsibility is not and the principal investigator must make sure that each staff member is competent, qualified, and experienced. The delegated staff must feel competent for that duty, for that study, for that type of patient. This is why it is so important to ask the study team or care home manager any questions about any of the duties you may have in the study. So you are confident you can safely and competently carry out the tasks delegated to you. 
So to summarize, care home staff for care homes in intervention group will be asked to complete the following responsibilities. Screening participants, complete the oral health training for care home staff, conduct the toothbrushing intervention, complete the weekly checklist, complete the oral health assessment tool for which training will be provided, report AEs and SAEs, and support the residents to understand what the topic study is about. Care home staff for care homes in the control group will be asked to complete the following responsibilities. Screening participants, completing the weekly checklist, reporting the AEs and SAEs, and supporting care home residents to understand what the topic study entails. We will now run through some other important information related to research in general and some specifics of the topic study. We will start by introducing good clinical practice. Good clinical practice, also known as GCP, is international ethical and scientific quality standard for designing, recording, and reporting trials that involve human subjects. It is inherent in all research activities and ensures that the right, safety, and well-being of the study participants are protected. The researchers working on the topic are all trained in GCP and will aim to ensure that the highest standards of research are maintained throughout. The principles of GCP are the foundation of high quality ethical research practice. They are developed from real cases. The four key principles are the rights, safety, and well being of the trial subject shall prevail over the interests of science and society. Each individual involved in conducting a trial shall be qualified by education, training, and experience to perform a task. The necessary procedures to secure the quality of every aspect of the trial shall be compiled with. All clinical information shall be recorded handled and stored in such a way that it, is, it can be accurately reported, interpreted, and verified while the confidentiality of the records of the trial subjects remain protected. We would like to ensure that we collect high quality data in the topic study. In order to do so, there are a few principles which will help all data, whether handwritten or electronic, should be accurate and complete. Leaving any data fields blank will mean that they cannot be used. If there was no information available, the event did not happen, or the participant scored zero, please indicate this in the field. Please use black ink so that completed documents may be photocopied or scanned. Please make it clear who has completed the data, writing your name and date wherever possible. Please write the data down at the time it is collected or as close as possible to the time it is collected. If you make a mistake, please place a single line through the entry and initial and date any alteration, even if completing blank fields retrospectively. Never delete original entry, but just put a single line through it and initial it. If it is hard to be wrong and always document the reason for the change. Please never use TIPEX or post-it notes as this is likely uh, to lead to inaccurate and incomplete data collection. The purpose of GCP is to keep participants safe. Safeguarding is the protecting of someone's right to live in safety free from abuse and neglect. Researchers are under an ethical obligation to report observed instance of serious neglect, health endangering, dignity demeaning treatment, 
to relevant regulator and or, or the police as appropriate. This does not mean that the researchers are required to proactively seek out instances of neglect, but does mean that they are obliged to report it if it is observed. Please contact us if you have any questions or concerns about the study. Our contact details are on this slide. Topic study is made possible thanks to the collaboration of several institutions featured here. And thank you so much for listening to this training. And please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions that you may have. Thank you so much and have a nice day.